Hi everyone, this is Musical Drooby, and today I'll be looking at some software called Mediculous. This software is pretty awesome, and I'm going to tell you how I came across it. I was watching a gospel musician on YouTube, and I noticed he had this running in his one of his windows on his uh, video stream. And I was like, man, that's a really detailed piano view, and I really like it. Uh, what program is that, I wonder? So I looked at the comments, and I finally came across the word Mediculous. Now I thought it was just a joke. So I looked up Mediculous online, and I came up with this program. Mediculous. It sounds like ridiculous, because it is ridiculous. Ridiculously awesome. Mediculous has the letters M-I-D-I at the beginning, which, of course, stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. And its function is pretty much to show exactly what you're playing on a, on a screen. You can also see intervals that you play, chords that you play. You can even see your notation uh, on the grand staff. And you can even use it to play back files, songs, play along with it, change the pitch of it, change the speed of it. Uh, and there's probably countless other features that I haven't even discovered yet in here. But so far, I'm pretty impressed. So... We're going to go ahead and jump right in. Let's look at the options. In the preference menu, you choose between a 76 key, a 61 key, or an 88 key. Three standard keyboards that are you know, available in the pro market. Um, also, you can split the octaves, not octaves, excuse me. You can split uh, left and right, blue or red, or whatever color you want them to be. It doesn't split it at middle C, I noticed. So there's middle C. It splits right there. An octave below middle C and that first B. So that's where it splits it. I'm not sure if you can set up a custom split. I don't see where you can. You can also use solfege. I'm not going to. Uh, just because I didn't find it very useful. And I'll tell you why real quick. Um, as you can see real quickly... Uh, Right now it's showing the notes that I play, and I'm also playing in C, C major scale. And solfege works great in C major, so I'll go ahead and turn on solfege. So instead of saying the letter names, it actually says solfege. You know, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. Yeah, so uh, that's pretty cool, but what happens if you're doing a song that's not in the key of C? Uh, I'm not sure if you can change that. Right here it says key, C major, but I've even tried to change the key up here, and it still showed the note says Do. So let's say I want to do a key in D major. It starts off on Re, and it says Fi instead of Do, Re, Mi, so it still thinks it's in C. So uh, if you're going to play in different tonalities, solfege probably is not the route for you. And plus, if you play a lot with kids, C major is uh, not always the best key to for kids to sing in. just depends on the song, I guess. But anyway, um, I still think it's a cool feature. Maybe, it, maybe there's a way to change it. I don't know. So I am not going to use solfege. Now, you can also show sharps and fl uh, or flats. You can't show both. Because obviously it doesn't know what key you're playing in. And uh, if it doesn't know what key you're playing in, it can't tell you if you're playing a flat or a sharp. Because essentially they're the same pitch. So it's kind of void of a way to you know, tell you what tonality you're playing in. And that's okay though. Uh, enable QWERTY basically lets you use the keyboard, um, your actual computer keyboard, to trigger notes. So instead of using my keyboard keyboard, I can use this. Oh, I don't like that sound. You know what? Let me close this first. There we go. Okay, we got this. So the velocity is pretty much maxed out right there. There's no <clears throat> uh, dynamics you can change there. I don't think there is. But anyway, whoops, what happened there? So, let's go back into preferences. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and check my audio MIDI preferences. I'm not going to use a MIDI synth with this because I'm using my actual synth that's plugged into the input of my recording device. So, I don't need a synthesizer. I'm using an actual hardware synth. I'm using ASIO drivers. I'm going to change that to direct sound because 
for some of the examples I want to do, you can't use ASIO and be able to hear what I'm doing. Um, output, primary sound driver, let's test it. Yep, I hear that. Sample rate, audio buffer size. So audio buffer would be if you were going to use uh, virtual instruments. That's quite a, 58 milliseconds is quite a delay there. So ASIO would be much better, but unfortunately with the way I'm recording this, I can't use those drivers. But after I shut this video off, I will. I'm choosing my active MIDI input as my Yamaha S90XS1. And then my MIDI output is also going to be the S90XS1. Very straightforward preference menu. Close that up. Um, let's go ahead and look at the program. So first of all, it can identify intervals. So C to D, major second, minor third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, minor sixth, already did that one, major seventh, octave. Now, not only will it do intervals, it'll also do chords. So you have a C, E, G chord, which is C major, it just says C. C minor, let's do a C diminished, C augmented, how about a C7? C7, I'm even using two hands here, so it knows all the notes I'm playing. And look how it's writing them as A sharps instead of B flat. <clears throat> anyway, you go to F. F minor seventh. B diminished. E7. A minor. So anyway, a lot of fun things you can do with this software. It also shows you on the staff over here. So that's kind of cool. You can see what a fifth looks like. Fifth looks like space to space, skip a space, or space to line, excuse me, line to line. Wow, I'm not, I'm not doing a very good fifth, am I? Let's do it down here. Space to space line to line so anyway skip a line it's great for teaching intervals uh, it's kind of small though it's kind of hard to see but you could probably zoom in with some special windows accessibility software if you wanted to other things it can do is uh, it has a nice panic button which I find is very useful whenever you have a lot of notes going at once press the panic button automatically stops all MIDI um, notes that are active and that's kind of cool. Uh, it shows you pretty much everything you're doing. So if you want to learn what somebody's playing, you know. So you can watch what, exactly what they're doing. A lot of cool stuff that you can do with it. You can even import files. I'm gonna open up audio here. Uh, I'm gonna open up Do Re Mi. I actually did this for a girl at school for a talent show. So let's listen to it. I hope you're able to hear this. I wasn't able, I had to redo the video. Uh, but hopefully this time it'll work. I hear it. I'm using direct sound, or, so it should be able to. I'm gonna change the pitch. changing the pitch not changing the tempo which is very useful now I want to change the speed and I also like that if you double click it anywhere on here it resets it back to the default value that's pretty cool so you could solo with it So anyway, have a little fun with it. Little improv, play that. You can also come up here, press delete. If I can find my delete button, it's so dark in this room. There we go, delete. Um, you might even be able to record too. Let me, well, I can't do it right now, but whatever. I'm sure there's some other things you can do. It has a pitch bin wheel you can use with the mouse if you don't want to use your actual one. 
modulation wheel. Really cool feature. You can use the pedal. This is my sustain pedal and it shows whenever it's on or off. Isn't that cool? Now here's the really cool thing about the sustain pedal. Let's say you want to play one note at a time with the sustain pedal. Let's change sounds real quick. Let's go to a different sound that has more of a slow decay or an endless decay rather or a whatever. Uh, let's go to a pad. Sorry, I'm popping here. There we go. Uh, let's see. How about woodwinds and strings? So I'm going to hold down the sustain pedal. It identifies the chord that you're sustaining. It doesn't identify what you're actually playing one at a time. So if you're only playing one note at a time, but you're using the sustain pedal, it remembers what you've already played and it builds onto the chord, whatever you're doing. So if you want to do a crazy uh, C major seven, C, oh, excuse me, C, uh, C seven chord. With a 13 in there. And I only did one note at a time. That's pretty cool. Uh, it doesn't show you the notes that you're sustaining. It just lets you sustain them and does that. So anyway, that's a really cool feature too. Overall, I think this is a really great program. Very useful for uh, teaching school if you do piano or of any sort or if you do solfege. Um, I could see how it could be helpful maybe for melodic direction a little bit to see what you're playing. You can kind of see what's going on on the keyboard because I always think of everything left and right. And when you're teaching melodic direction, there's a lot of kids that don't play piano, so they don't naturally think, oh, to the right is up and to the left is down. Um, and on the music staff, it literally is up or down. Of course, you know, a lot of kids do play barred percussion, and that is pretty much the same as piano in a lot of ways. So at least they have that they can visually think about. But um, I, I think it's a great program. Plus, I think it's really fantastic if you want to learn something that, and slow it down and really just hammer it. Or I think you can even download lessons from the guy that uh, – from some gospel musician site. He has lessons that he can give you or you can purchase, and you can sit there and learn it on your own. Because, I don't know, to me personally, learning things on your own is one of the best ways you can learn. Um, it's cheap. It's uh, satisfying when you do something on your own. Plus, you can do it on your own time if you're busy. You know, you don't have to wait for somebody to give you a lesson at a certain time of day. You can do it when you get home from work or whatever. Or if you're a professional musician already and you want to learn a different style or something, I think it would be great. And I think it's great to visually. Plus, uh, obviously, if you're into making videos, especially instructional videos with piano, this would be a fantastic piece of software to have to put in one of your windows that you're recording when you're streaming or uh, when you're recording a video for, uh, you know, educational use. Anyway, great software. Check it out. Ridiculous. It's ridiculous.